Welcome back to Mental Math. Today we have a battle of mathematical giants. 100 factorial versus 90 to the power of 100. Which of these colossal numbers is larger? Direct calculation is impossible, so we need a more elegant strategy. Our strategy will be to use the ratio test. We will construct a fraction with these two numbers and determine if its value is greater or less than 1. We need to determine if the ratio of 100 factorial to 90 to the 100th is greater than 1, less than 1, or equal to 1. To analyze this, let's expand both the numerator and the denominator. The numerator is the product of integers from 1 to 100, and the denominator is 100 copies of 90. Since there are 100 terms on top and 100 on the bottom, we can regroup this into a product of 100 fractions. Now our question has transformed. Is this long product of fractions, which we'll call p, greater than 1 or less than 1? The key is to understand the different types of terms within this product. We can split p into three distinct groups, terms whose value is less than 1, a single term equal to 1, and terms greater than 1. The entire question boils down to this. Does the green group, the product of terms greater than 1, overpower the red group of terms less than 1? To find out, we can pair them up. This problem has a beautiful symmetry that we can exploit. Let's pair the term just below 1 with the term just above 1. There's a beautiful pattern here. We can rewrite the numerators relative to 90. This becomes 90 minus 1 over 90 times 90 plus 1 over 90. The numerators are now in the form a minus b times a plus b, which is the classic difference of squares formula, a squared minus b squared. This simplifies to 90 squared minus 1, all divided by 90 squared. We can split this fraction into two parts. This is equal to 1 minus the tiny fraction 1 over 90 squared. This result is clearly less than 1. This pattern holds for all symmetric pairs. For example, the product of 80 over 90 and 100 over 90 simplifies to 1 minus 100 over 90 squared, still less than 1. We can form 10 such pairs from 80 and 100 down to 89 and 91. The product of every single one of these pairs is less than 1. Now, let's reassemble the full product with this new insight. Our product P is made of three groups. Let's analyze each one carefully. Group A is a product of 79 fractions, all of which are less than 1. Their total product is therefore a very small number, much less than 1. Group B is the product of our 10 pairs. Since the product of each individual pair is less than 1, the product of all 10 pairs must also be less than 1. And group C is simply the number 1. It doesn't change anything. So, we are multiplying a number less than 1 by another number less than 1 by 1. The inescapable conclusion is that the entire product, P, must be less than 1. The exponential wins. Now, let's translate this back to our original problem. We have proven that our original ratio is less than 1. Multiplying both sides by 90 to the power of 100 gives us the final answer. And so 90 to the power of 100 is the larger number. The initial growth of the factorial just isn't enough to overcome the sustained high-value multiplication of the exponential. It's a beautiful example of how multiplication compounds. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed seeing how we can compare these massive numbers without calculating them, hit that like button and subscribe for more mathematical insights. See you next time.